that we have more control over our energy expenditure than we've been led to believe. This means that you don't actually need a detox. You don't need a supplement to boost your metabolism. Your metabolism is fine. On the flip side, it means that you need to start owning and taking responsibility for yourself. If you want to increase how much energy your body uses, you need to do something about it. Hello and welcome to The Core Podcast. We're your hosts, Sandini Keller and Shannon Polson. I'm a precision nutrition certified coach. And I'm a NASM certified personal trainer for over 13 years. We support women 30 years old and over to pursue health through realistic nutrition and fitness strategies. Our passion is to help you find that smile when you look in the mirror, find freedom when you eat, and joy in moving your body. Make sure to subscribe for your bi-weekly dose of doable health tips, practical advice, and so much more. It's the health education you wish you'd have. Today on the core podcast, we are going to chat with Aileeny on metabolism. So we are going to learn the what, the why, and the how, and so much more that she can give us. Aileeny, I am so excited (laughs) to hear what you have to say today. So before we actually dive into this, we have a great free resource for you. If you want to follow along I have an infographic all about what I'm going to talk about. Now, it doesn't have all the information that I'm giving you because, you know, I can't write it all out, but you can go on the podcast podcast notes. If you want to pause, you can go, you can download it and follow along or be sure to download this later and you can have all this information at the tip of your fingers. Metabolism gets a lot of hype nowadays and people are all about boosting your metabolism and resetting your metabolism and um, I don't know, rejuvenating your metabolism. I'm trying to think like I worked with a marketing company. I actually didn't actually work with them. I, I kind of fired them way before anything happened because they kept throwing these catchphrases at me. Like you have to tell people that you're going to rejuvenate their metabolism. And it started driving me crazy because you can't do that. I'm going to start out by saying that your metabolism is not broken. There's no such thing. If you restart your metabolism, it means you die. So let's not do that. <laughs> she <laughs> she that. <laughs> you died. <laughs> it's not a switch. Like our metabolism is a, it isn't a switch. It's not on off. Like our body is working 24 hours. So you yeah. can't like reboot It's not a computer. You can't restart things because what your metabolism is, is your metabolism is getting everything you eat and everything you drink. It's getting the energy in that, which is called calories. Calories are not food. Okay. Calories are a unit to measure energy. Metabolism is your body getting the energy from everything you eat, everything you drink, plus oxygen to turn it into the kind of energy that your body uses to function. So our body does a bunch of different processes. So your body gets the energy, the calories from everything you eat and drink and turns it into the energy that it needs and transforms them. But it's it's a complex process, okay? This is an oversimplification. So all of you science people listening to this, I know that this is way simpler than what's actually happening. So (laughs) it is getting the energy that you eat and drink and turning it into energy to function. So there, our metabolism has four basic components. If you don't exercise, if you don't, if you don't exercise yet, start with the 10 minute rule, start with the one more day. You've heard about these things, but if you don't exercise, you have three parts of your metabolism. If you do exercise, there's four. So it's BMR, basal metabolic rate, which is about 60% of your metabolism. There's NEAT, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is about 20% of your metabolism. Yes, I'll explain all of this. There is TEF, which is the thermic effect of food. That's about 10% of your metabolism. And then there's exercise activity thermogenesis, which is workouts, which is about 10% of your metabolism. These four things, they compose the amount of energy that your body uses. If you eat less 
than how much energy your body needs to function, you will lose weight. If you eat more than the amount your body needs to function, you will gain weight. If you eat the amount that your body needs to function, you're gonna maintain your weight. Now, there will be episodes on this. Yes, this is true regardless of anything else. There is a balance between how much you're taking in, how much your body is using. And if you don't have enough, if you're not eating enough, your body has to pull from internal resources. If you're eating too much, your body has to put that somewhere, which is fat tissue. So let's start with our BMR, basal metabolic rate. This is about 60% of your metabolism. It's the biggest part of your metabolism. Most of the energy your body uses, it uses to function. It is mostly determined by genetics and you can somewhat interfere with it, but this is the bulk of your metabolism is just your body functioning. Because right now, if you just close your eyes and stay completely still, you're breathing, you're pumping blood, your body is regulating your hormone levels, your cells are repairing, your cells are growing, digestion is happening, your, your heart is beating. And if you open your eyes again, you're blinking. So every single thing that we do, there's a lot going on that you don't see in your body. All of that is your basal metabolic rate. This is survival, okay? This is laying down without doing absolutely anything. Survival is about 60% of your metabolism. And what determines how much, what, how many calories that actually is, how much energy that is, is your body size. Larger bodies use more energy because it's a bigger body. I'm not talking about overweight necessarily. Large bodies, for instance, if you're a very short person, your body uses less energy than a basketball player because they're very tall. So this just has to do with the size of your body. Bigger bodies use more energy. Body composition, the more muscle you have, the higher your BMR is because muscle burns a lot more energy than fat does. Your sex, men usually have more muscle and less fat than women in general. So men tend to burn a lot more calories. If you've ever counted calories, been on a cal calorie counting diet, with a male person doing this with you, if you're a female, you know the frustration of the difference in calories that each body needs. Men just burn more calories. Age, with age, we tend to start losing muscle. Listen to the end because I have very important things to say about age, we'll get to that. But as we age, we tend to start losing muscle mass. And if you don't actively maintain that body mass, you will slow down the amount of energy that you burn simply because you have less muscle. So that's basal metabolic rate. What happens without your input? <laughs> your body is going to function while you're alive. So let's not reset your metabolism. Let's just try to improve it a little bit because you, you want to keep going, all right? The next part, which is about 20% of your metabolism is NEAT. NEAT is a non-exercise activity thermogenesis is a fancy way to sound like I know a bunch. It just means to move more. Okay. It's just fancy words to say, just move. This is about 20% of your total metabolism. And this is where you can make the biggest impact is right here. This just means that this isn't that exercise session that you're having. This is just the small things that you do throughout the day. If you ever stop to think about it, to think about, do you know that kid at school that was always fidgeting as opposed to that kid of school that always sat completely still? Fidgeters tend to have lower body weight than people who stay absolutely still because their body is using a lot of energy to do those small movements all the time. I'm not saying that you have to develop a habit of fidgeting. <laughs> I'm just telling you that, you know, these, these are move, this is movement that you're doing without purposefully thinking that you're working out. So fidgeting, walking, any movement that's not structured exercise, and you can change this to a big degree. A few examples would be at home, walk or play with your dogs or your kids or your grandkids, gardening, cleaning the house, while you're watching commercials, during your favorite show or during your show, take a walk or pace when you're watching, watching commercials, or if you're on the phone, 
talking on the phone with someone, just pace instead of sitting still, mm -hmm. go for a little laps around your, your living room, have a dance party. Um, just like I said, play with your kids or grandkids at work during your lunch hour or break, take a short walk. Even if it's around the office, take the stairs instead of the elevator or the escalator, uh, pace while you're on the phone. Instead of sending an email or calling your colleagues, walk to their desk, have a conversation, then walk back. Uh, don't take a huge water bottle to work because, you know, take a smaller one so that you have to stand up and refill it more times. When you are out, take a walk after dinner, park far away from entrances, uh, take the stairs instead of the elevator, the escalator. All of this goes into that 20% of your metabolism that you can really in very small ways practice doing this more. Um, it's a bit of a joke at our house that whenever we travel or go to the movies, anywhere that has an escalator, I don't go on it. I, I walk, it doesn't, doesn't mm -hmm. matter how heavy my suitcase is, what I'm carrying, where we are, I take the stairs and it's kind of turned into a bit of a race, which is kind of funny because I actually get a run in and I'm not a runner. Mm -hmm. So I get a little jogging because my kids are like, I'm going to beat you to it. And they go on the, um, on the escalator and, and I'm just like pumping to get there when they get there. So this is just movement that's not structured, which leads us to the next part of your metabolism, which is the TF, the thermic, e thermic effect of food. So everything you eat your body has to digest it, it has to absorb it, metabolize it, and store whatever is extra, and also generate body heat. So this process is called the thermic effect of food. It is the amount of calories or the percentage of calories in a certain food that your body uses to process that food. Now I'm gonna start right at the top telling you that yes, you can slightly manipulate this but regardless it's still just about 10 percent of your metabolism so there are some people out there that love like creating diets or plans and that like work with the thermic effect of food effect of food and they're like oh you know if you can manipulate the thermic effect of food and they sound like really smart but it's just about 10 percent of your metabolism so this is not what's going to make or break your metabolism however it does have an impact. And this percentage, 10-ish percent, it depends on different factors, but the biggest one is the composition of your food, meaning carbs, fat, and protein. So fat has nine calories per gram of fat. The thermic effect of fat is zero to three percent. Fat takes almost none of itself to digest, absorb, and metabolize. What this means is if you eat 100 calories of fat, about a tablespoon of butter, less than three calories of those 100 calories are used to digest and metabolize fat. For fat, that is not great news. So this idea that eating a ton of fat is good for you, there are those diets circulating there. This is one of the reasons why it's not a great idea. When you eat fat, Almost 100% of the calories in fat are calories that your body is going to use, yes, but mostly store. Fat is the most easily stored macronutrient that we eat. So most of the fat that we eat gets used as energy or stored, and it barely takes any energy to metabolize fat. Now, carbs have four calories per gram, which is less than half the calories of fat, and the thermic effect of carbs is five to 10%. That's awesome. Which means that if you eat 100 calories of carbs, about one slice of bread, five to 10 calories are used to digest and metabolize those carbs. That's pretty good. Now, protein like carbs have four calories per gram. However, the thermic effect of food is 20 to 30%, which is the superstar of thermic effect of food is protein, which means that 100 calories of protein, which is about two ounces or 50 grams of lean chicken, 20 to 30 calories of those 100 calories are used to digest and metabolize that protein, which is amazing. 
Now, this is where people that want to send, sell you a specific diet or their <laughs> secret formula for magical weight loss, they come in and they say that this is why you have to eat a lot of protein. We're going to talk about protein in the future. Again, yes, eating protein is going to help you with many, many things. Eating enough protein is very, very important. And yes, it will mean that you're using more calories to digest that food than you would be with having a high carb or a high fat diet. However, it's very important to remember that this is still just about 10% of your diet. Eating more of something because of the thermic effect of food is not what is going to make the biggest difference in your diet. So this is a consequence. This is not something that you should necessarily try to manipulate. But when you increase your protein intake, when you get enough protein in the, the amount that you should be getting and you taper down on the carbs and the fat, like you balance those out after getting enough protein, you will see a difference in your body composition and in your weight. And this is one of the reasons why, because protein to be digested, absorbed and metabolized, it takes a lot of its own energy, which is pretty great news, which leads us to the last part of our metabolism, which is eat, exercise, activity, thermogenesis, not eat food. <laughs> so this is your normal exercise, which is anywhere from zero to 10% of your metabolism. So that 30 to 60 minutes of your day that you engage in formal workouts, that is where this comes in. Now, this can be zero and this can be 10 and this could be more, okay? This just depends on the intensity, the type of exercise. So if you don't do exercise or if you're only doing 10, 15 minutes of exercise a day and it's low intensity, this percentage is very, very small. If you're an athlete, this percentage is much higher. So there's a lot of room there. So exercise burns less calories than we would like it to burn. And we've talked about this before. One of the episodes, we talk about eating back exercise calories because exercise doesn't burn as many calories as we would like it to burn. And we don't exercise to burn calories. Exercise is not a punishment for what you ate. Exercise is important for your health and it's important for your body composition. It's not a great mechanism for calorie burn. That being said, how the type of exercise and how much you exercise changes your body composition. When you start changing your body composition and having more muscle on your frame, your basal metabolic rate increases because you have more muscle, so you're burning more calories. So exercise isn't something for you to do to burn calories now. No, exercise is something you do for your health so that you can improve your basic metabolism and that's gonna make a huge difference. Uh -huh. <laughs> the, little, the little sounds you make are awesome. <laughs> so I would like a little last note on metabolism. If you've been around long enough, you have heard that when you hit 30, everything goes downhill because after 30, and Shannon has like big eyes, look at me, after 30, you start gaining weight and your metabolism changes. I mean, I cannot tell you how many people, and I did this for a while, blame weight gain on metabolism. Well, I have great news for you. I would like to talk just a little bit about a fascinating database study that was done last year. Um, so we're in 2022. So this was last summer, 2021. It looked at 6,421 subjects from eight days old to 95 years of age, male and female from 29 countries. Now there were different data sets, different math mathematical models and adjustments were made to account in differences in body size, age and reproductive status. Now it's wonderful study because contrary to popular belief, our metabolism doesn't drop when we turn 30. What this study found is that in the first year of life, metabolism accelerates to about 50% above adult values. And then it declines steadily to adult levels of metabolism by about 20 years of age. And it stabilizes between 20 and 60 years of age. 
So there are no excuses. You can no longer blame being 35, 40, 45. You cannot say I gained weight because my metabolism slowed down. It actually didn't. And after 65 years of age, it starts to decline. But even this decline, it's not super steep. At 90 years and above, it's about 26% lower than middle-aged adults' metabolism. So it's not a massive, it doesn't drop suddenly. And this is great news. This means that we have more control over our energy expenditure than we've been led to believe. This means that you don't actually need a detox. You don't need a supplement to boost your metabolism. Your metabolism is fine. On the flip side, it means that you need to start owning and taking responsibility for yourself. If you want to increase how much energy your body uses, you need to do something about it. If you feel like, oh, I've gained weight after I turned 30, blah, blah, blah. Well, the, this wasn't concluded in the study, but this is a consensus in the nutrition field is that when we turn 30, usually that's when people are starting to settle down, people are starting to have kids, people start getting a desk job. So you're actually moving more. Your need decreases considerably after you turn 30. After you turn 30, if you are not weight training, your body starts losing muscle mass. So it's not that your metabolism is, is decreasing. It's that the habits and the lifestyle and things that you do are changing how much your body uses. And we tend to eat more because in your 30s is usually as well when people have the most independence financially. You start shopping for yourself, paying for your own meals, eating out on your own. Now, of course, for lots of people, this starts sooner or later, but this is kind of where these big life changes happen. And what can you do about this? It's simple. You learn how much your body actually needs, how much energy your body needs, you increase daily movement that has nothing to do with exercise. Increase your need. You exercise in a way that builds muscle mass. Now, we've said this so many times. Shannon says this all the time. Any movement is better than no movement. Yes, ideally, movement that builds muscle mass is the best. And you eat a full range of macros, but you prioritize protein. You don't skim on protein. Now, again, I have a reference sheet for you about all of this. So it's in the podcast notes, download it to see exactly how these pieces fit together and a few tips on what you can do on each one of these things. Do you know what I wish, Aileenie? <laughs> I wish that these types of studies were making news headlines. Yes. Like, right. we just did this new study. Turns out, you know, X, Y, Z here's how to go about it, you know, versus all of the negative stuff. And even on, you know, magazine headlines, like, yes. oh, three minutes to flat abs. Like what is a flat ab? And if it only takes me three minutes, then I've been wasting my time. Like yeah. I wish we could give resources to people that actually meant something versus yes. feeding us all this bullshit basically. And it's funny because when this study came out, people were incensed and, you know, so many of people so many of us in the nutrition field were like why are you angry you should be happy that your yeah. metabolism <laughs> isn't going down but it removes the excuse right it's much yeah. easier to say oh it's not me it's my metabolism and I can't do anything mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. so. yeah oh that's funny yeah I didn't look at it on the flip side <laughs> that is funny it's we have to own it right we have to take yeah. responsibility for it I like well, it. In our next episode, we are going to talk about the advantages and the disadvantages of using machine equipment in your workout. So lots to learn there. You're going to see what is best for you, how to progress from one to the other, and of course, the advantages and disadvantages of using the machines. And we will see you there.